Our final speaker from this group is Dr. Greer. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Dr. Stephen Greer. I'm a trained surgeon and a uh, healthcare sector sector analyst. Um, I performed hundreds of uh, open heart surgery cases, and I know the medical device industry uh, pretty well. Um, I'm speaking today to urge caution uh, to the panel in approving the Sapien valve. Uh, a bad chapter in medical device FDA regulation is set to repeat itself if the Sapien valve is allowed on the market for broad use. Um, in 2003, the Cypher drug looting stent uh, was approved with only one year follow up data. Uh, Dr. Marty Leone of the CRF uh, was leading those studies. Now, in 2011, the Edward Sapien percutaneous aortic valve is up for approval again with only one year follow up data. And it's the, uh, Dr. Leone is also one of the uh, principal investigators. The partner trials to be reviewed today followed the Sapien valve for only one year. Traditionally, mechanical valves have had the highest regulatory hurdle, and for good reason. Uh, many of you here remember decades ago the Bjork Shiley uh, valve that uh, was uh, a bad experience. When the valve failed, there was rapid death. Uh, that's one of the reasons mechanical valves have to go through such rigorous long term follow up. Back with the Cypher valve, as, uh, at Cypher Stent, as an, as an example, comparison here, it was only after one year when aneurysms started to show up and form, otherwise known as late stent malapposition. What will we see with the Sapien valve after one year? Will we see more retrograde leakage? Will we see higher, even higher stroke rates? Will we see heart block requiring more pacemakers? In 2003, the Cypher stent was granted rapid Medicare approval even before the FDA. As a result, off-label usage skyrocketed. At one point, more than 90% of all PCI cases involved a drug eluting stent. Then came the evidence. Stents just don't work. Compared to medical therapy, Courage, Berry 2D, Syntax, and then the safety data in the 2000 ESC drove the adoption and usage of stents down. Tens of thousands of Americans in the meantime were killed or severely harmed by the first generation drug eluting stents. That's an example of an aneurysm on IVUS cross section. Just to, some of our estimates with 25 million drug eluting stents that were implanted since 2003, an estimated, with an estimated 1 to 3 percent aneurysm rate, that translates into approximately a, more, a million coronary aneurysms. In addition, the lifelong plavix that required as stroke and significant bleeding. <coughs> And the Cypher stent just was recently announced by Johnson & Johnson that they're exiting the business altogether. Now, with the Sapien valve, we've already seen at least a 7% stroke rate in the very short study so far per the FDA analysis. In addition to significant bleeding and 50% of the patients getting femoral artery damage and iliac artery damage and aortic dissection. Uh, per the FDA documents, uh, Dr. Leone et al. changed the definition of stroke to major stroke in the partner trials, presumably to decrease those numbers. The partner study, is important to note, is not even fully published and fully analyzed. We're just looking at the cohort B here. Why the rush? Is this a business move to get ahead of the Medtronic trials? By the year two, 2015, according to J.P. Morgan estimates, an estimated 400 implanting medical centers will be placing 26,000 sapien valves a year. That translates into approximately 18,000 strokes per year caused by the sapien valve. The cases we just heard were the lucky ones, and I'm very happy for you. Many patients would rather die from heart disease than be crippled by a debilitating stroke as an octogenarian. In the United States, FDA approval lets the genie out of the bottle. Unlike Europe, where reimbursement doesn't happen quite often, approval by the FDA almost certainly means reimbursement and rapid usage of a device like this. Uh, related to that, a recent JAMA study uh, that was uh, helped, uh, conducted by the American College of Cardiology showed that 50% of coronary stents were implanted with inappropriate indications. Edwards is already preparing, we know this, is already preparing to launch the Sapien in hundreds of hospitals, not just the centers of excellence. Again, similar to what we saw with the stents. A perfect storm is brewing, creating a major public hazard. First of all, there's a pro-medical device climate in Washington. From President Obama to Speaker Boehner, with the high unemployment, it's viewed that uh, 
the medical device industry is a priority. I'm sorry, we're at five patients. minutes. I'll yep. need you to wrap up in 30 seconds. Yep. And I've got three more slides. The other one is that investors desperately want this device. And lastly, doctors need to pick up the slack in the cath lab since the stent usage is down. How will inoperable be defined? What is inoperable? Michael DeBakey got, a, got aortic work at, at, uh, at age 97 and lived well after that. Will cardiologists self-refer these valves just as they do now with the stents, the so-called oculostrenotic reflex? Two more slides. And I, rec I urge the panel, if you do find the risk-benefit uh, worthy of some sort of approval, that it should have a strict limit, strict label, and that Medicare, just they do with carotid stents now, should reimburse this only for specific populations. Recently published were the ACC guidelines that should be adhered to. Right, we've got the guidelines. Yep. We there need you to go. Cut That's you the there. last slide. Thank you very much. Um, I want to thank all five speakers for taking the time to address the panel.